Okay, so this is a time lapse of what I did for my first Art 5 video. It was of a red deer character named Hawking that is owned by someone I know from a different game that um, goes by Solaris Meadow on Art Fight. And a lot of other places, I think, too, if I recall correctly. Anyway, first off, just sketching. Uh, you will notice I do flip the canvas a lot to check stuff. I'm, you know, it's an easy thing to do digitally, and thus I take advantage of the ability to make sure everything still looks right. You'll also notice there are some random pauses where I'm not <clears throat> not drawing, and that's when I'm checking or looking up reference on one of my other monitors to make sure that it actually, you know, looks like a deer. I wasn't going to approach the antlers right off the bat because they're complicated and scary. So I was just making sure that the face looked correct. It sort of felt almost right at this point, but I knew it was off and I believe pretty soon here I'm going to go through and make some pretty big adjustments to really make it look like a deer. You'll also notice that I'm doing all my sketching on a color layer in Photoshop, and that's because I think it's way easier to be able to go back and forth uh, via a mask to adjust it and not have to worry about opacity of other things. And here you can see I'm just tweaking it to, in Liquify to get it to be that, you know, normal deer shape. But yeah, using the color layer just, it feels better for me. And here I'm going to actually start working on the antlers. I started off just with, you know, sketchy lines, trying to figure out where I want um, the antlers to go. There were some in the character design, suggesting how many tines on it and that kind of thing. But, you know, they were all, for the majority, drawn from the side view. So trying to figure out how, where it is placed in space is a little bit harder. Here you can see I decided to just block it in with wider strokes and swap colors so that that way I could definitely t I could work independently on left and right antlers. And th the part where I'm going back and just adding a little bit of white back into it is basically so I can um, understand what is in front and back. And since it's so so you know rough, I don't care if I squish it around or anything like that. Here we're just figuring I'm just figuring out the cropping. And moving the ears out of the way because it got really irritating in that um, it was creating weird tangents. And then actually going back and um, drawing in the final lines for the antlers over my rough uh, sketch there. I added a bunch of little like tiny squiggly lines on it to show the way it wraps around so that I could make sure to keep the 3D feel of it, even if you don't see those in the final. I think this is another me looking at reference on the other monitor. Yeah, the ear was bugging me because it was a uh, tangent with that one tine of the antler, so I added a little bit more space there. Okay, and I considered that line art done, or that sketch. And we start blocking and stuff. I started off with just laying in the highlights all over the place. I sort of had an idea for the color palette I wanted to use, but you'll notice it changes a lot. So I'm just kind of roughly blocking in where the light would be. I wanted to have a cool rim light. Or a, and when I say cool, I, in this case, I mean like awesome looking as opposed to cool. Because the cool, uh, the actual color cool, I wanted to have in the, the shadow in the front. And this is blocking in the like local color. For once, I didn't use a color layer on this. I figured it was a simple enough character that I could just tweak it as I went. And then I started placing in colors for the background. And realized that, yes, I should kind of mask out the actual character if I'm just going to be splashing color everywhere.
I really want to do something pretty simple for the background. So, hey, out comes the color layer again. I'm just going to do basically one dark color over the background gradient. And the lights and darks will be mostly created just by the values of that dark colored color layer. I basically wanted to give just enough detail in it that I, you know, didn't have to think too hard. Uh, it, but it would also, like, be a background. It wasn't just a character floating in space. And also the framing helps focus on the character. This is why it's dark at the top and the bottom and on the, uh, the right side, or what is currently the right side, to make the face and the highlighted side of the character be more of the focus. The fact the, the eye is blue and that's like the only real blue in the whole image will also later, you know, fo make you focus more on the face. You can see I'm adding a little bit more of the like vi vignetting the background and just tweaking it because it's like, oh, it feels too dark. It doesn't feel the, the crazy saturation I wanted. So I'm just, you know, adding more layers that do stuff. And then finally, I'm finally starting to actually like paint the character. The red deer seems to have a lot of light, like it seems in a lot of the pictures that I saw, the the bucks or stags or whatever seem to have a lot of like a fluffy mane almost. So I really wanted to have that be emphasized. So that's where like I'm putting in the majority of the texture, but of course the majority of the texture is also where it's either in the light against dark or it's that transition from light to dark because that's where you end up seeing most texture. I don't really put a lot in the darkest area because, well, you can't see that normally. So yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of like fluff to the edges. I am definitely not a person who has to draw every single dang um, hair or clump of fur. That's that's way too much effort. I would rather just put enough detail that you get the picture and you can fill in the rest if you really want to inside your brain. So again, the, the amount of detail that I'm putting in that dark area there in the like core shadow is pretty minimal. It's like, oh, just enough to emphasize that there, yeah, there's fur there, but I'm not going to draw everyone. you notice that a lot of the line art is slowly going away because I'm painting over it, but not all of it. And because it's a furry creature, then the line art can probably stay as just a random incidental shadow. So tweaking a few things here to make it, make him look more deer-like, like the way the eye attaches and, you know, fixing some of his markings around his face that were on the character sheet. And then I realized that the corner of the jaw there was just sticking out way too much. Like, it should be in shadow. So I fixed that, and then I went on to the antlers, which I was putting off to last. They are supposed to be sort of a golden color for the character, but initially the colors I was using, it made it look like gold metal instead of just golden-ish. So I added the blue in there, and I left sort of almost a subsurface, subsurface scattering line of orange around the outside. I don't know if an antler would necessarily have subsurface scattering. I didn't look that up when I was painting this, but it was one of those, like, I think it would look cool and it would emphasize that they are golden color as opposed to just happen to be, you know, normal bone white, but happen to be gold in this picture kind of thing. And yes, did use mask there, or uh, selection there to be able to paint behind it that one antler time because I was going to get really frustrated at it. Yeah, I just layered a sort of bluish purpley color over the dark brown that I'd laid in, laid in first. And 
it, it worked out really well, especially because it isn't like a s completely solid density in a sense. And I went through, added a few more things, like the little glittery eye shine, and I believe now I just decided to tweak the lighting a little bit. It wasn't quite, like the antlers were standing out a little bit too much at the top of the picture, and it lost a little bit of the color that I'd wanted, and both uh, feeling too orange across the board and in other places cool where it should have been more orange. So this is a lot of me tweaking effects to try and give the sort of glowy, warm light that I wanted to have. cropping in a little bit, and then we're done. Thank you for watching this. Hoping to do more of them. Enjoy the final picture.